Okay, so let's get you smarter in algebra. And how do you get smarter and better in algebra? Well, there's only one way, and that is to take it one concept, one skill at a time. And we're going to focus in on what this means. And this little notation right here, yes, indeed, is what you think it is. If I wrote the word help and I put a little thing like that, that's an exclamation mark, and that's what that is. Okay, but this has a different meaning in mathematics. We're not saying five really loud here, like screaming it out. <laughs> you know, that's, of course, that's what it looks like. You know, you would, could think of it that way, but this has a completely different meaning in algebra. So if you've never seen this before, you're definitely going to want to stick around and get smarter in algebra. But this is definitely going to be in your future. Um, and typically, uh, this will be taught, you know, somewhere in between algebra one and maybe definitely in algebra two. Okay, but if you're taking a basic math course, maybe pre-algebra, stick around. This is not that difficult. And uh, by the time you do actually see this in class, you'll be like, oh, I know what that is. I got this down, no problem. Okay, so you're definitely going to want to know this. It's not like a trivial type of thing that we're going to be discussing. And if you think you know what this is, then we're going to confirm your understanding of this as well. Okay, so we're going to get to this in just one second, but first let me introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. So I offer full courses. I have literally over 100 different math courses, many of which, by the way, are test prep uh, type courses. So if you're preparing for something like the SAT, ACT, GRE, GED, or some sort of teacher certification exam. I have a lot of specialty uh, courses, custom built courses along those lines, but very, very uh, powerful uh, curriculum. And uh, basically, I teach you how to solve the most common problems you're going to encounter at these various levels of mathematics, literally thousands of problems. So it's taken me years to build this program out in all my course libraries. But if you're interested in this, you can uh, check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. Now. If you are a math student, I assume that you are studying mathematics to, uh, in some uh, uh, manner. Okay, Maybe you're preparing for a test, or maybe you're actually taking a course. But the one thing you need to know is my golden rule of math. And that is, after decades of teaching math, there's just no doubt about it. Those students who take the best math notes almost always have the best math grades. And those students who don't think taking math notes is important... Um, well, they're going to suffer the consequences, right? And, you know, I don't want to beat up on you too much, but you observe these things as teachers, uh, as a teacher. Okay, you can see those students who take great notes and their test, you know, grades are good. And then those students who are like like this or like, oh, my, my test grade, I didn't do too well. I got a C minus or whatnot. I'm like, well, that's because you were looking at your cell phone or talking to your buddy in class, et cetera, et cetera, right? If you take math seriously, okay, you're going to get a good return on your investment. Right? There's no other way to study mathematics. Matter of fact, I would suggest don't study at all if you're not going to take the uh, subject seriously. And it's definitely worth uh, your while to um, really buckle down and, and, and improve in your note-taking. And this will transcend in other courses as well. So don't want to make you feel too bad about not taking good notes, because I didn't take good notes way back in the good old days. But, you know, I learned through the School of Hard Knocks, and I'm trying to have you avoid some pain there. Okay, so start taking better notes if that is your situation. But in the meantime, you need something to study from. So I offer detailed, comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, and Trigonometry. You can find a link uh, to each one of those notes in the description of this video as well. Okay, so what is this symbol? Okay, any guesses out there? Right, don't look it up. Don't look at go onto your cell phone and be like, what is that? What is that? Well, this is something called factorial, all right, factorial. So let's take a look at how it works. And this comes up uh, in algebra when you start studying uh, things like probability, permutations, combinations. It really gets into uh, counting methods, all right? So... Um, Let's just first define what this is, uh, what this means. Okay, so here, what I'm saying, of course, I got some stuff written out. I've just kind of focused where my highlighter is at. So this is, uh, we would say this is five factorial. Okay, so this little exclamation mark right here is a factorial. So what is a factorial? Well, five factorial. Okay, let's just follow the pattern. 
and look to see what this is equal to. Five factorial is equal to five times four times three times two times one. Hmm, interesting. So if you multiply all these numbers together, you get 120. So five factorial is equal to 120. Now, for those of you out there who have fancy scientific calculators, you can't find this, you can find this factorial function on your calculator. You're gonna have to look around uh, for it, but um, of course you can kind of see here that these factorial values can get very large very quickly, okay? So if you go into your, your calculator and do something like 10 factorial, that's gonna be a very huge number, okay? So I'm gonna teach you some other things here in a second on how we kind of manage uh, factorials. But by definition, the factorial of a number is simply you take the number and you start decreasing by one until you get all the way down to one and then you're gonna find a product of all those numbers. That is a uh, factorial. So it comes to mind if we come across zero factorial, what is that? Well, by definition, zero factorial is one. Okay, you just gotta have to know this. All right, so zero factorial is one. And this is an example of five factorial. Okay, so you can, uh, you know, just think of various different examples. If I said, what is three factorial? It would be what? Three times two times one, which of course is six, right? Very, very basic, not that difficult uh, conceptually to understand. Now let's take a look at um, some basic ways that we can uh, um, deal with factorial problems, okay? And then this is just an introduction to the subject, but uh, again, by you know knowing this, you are going to be a little bit smarter in algebra by the time you walk away from this video, and that's the way you improve one step at a time, okay? All right, so let's take a look at this problem here, eight factorial over five factorial. Now here's the answer. So let's suppose I have eight factorial over five factorial, and I'm like, okay, eight factorial, I can go eight times seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. So I don't have to go and figure this out. Now we already know that five times four times three times two times one over here, okay, is 120, okay? Now, if I take uh, this right here, eight times seven times six, and multiply that by 120, I'm gonna get the actual value for, for eight factorial by itself, okay? Which is gonna be a big number. But if I'm taking eight factorial and dividing by factorial, one thing that you can do, okay, instead of writing out all of eight factorial and then dividing that all by five factorial, you can do the following. So let's think about it. Eight factorial is eight times seven times six times what? Well, all of this, okay, five times four times three times two times one, by definition, that is five factorial, okay? Remember, this is the same thing as five factorial. So I can kind of stop myself here. When I'm thinking about eight factorial, I can go eight times seven times six times, well, five times four times three times two times one is the same thing as five factorial. And I'm dividing by five factorial. So I'm like, hmm, can we cross cancel here? Because all these numbers are the same. Right, this is the same product. Yes, you can. Okay, and we want to do that because working back, working with factorials, uh, the values become very, very large. So now, a factorial divided by five factorial is going to be reduced down to or simplified to us just figuring out what eight times seven times six is, and the product of eight times seven times six is three three six. Okay, so this is some of the uh, kind of an introductory way that we kind of deal with. Uh, or manage factorial problems because factorial values can get very large very quickly. But uh, factorials come into play big time when we're talking about um, uh, combinations and permutations, right? Now, if you're not familiar with uh, combinations and permutations, this would be, uh, examples would be like, if I have uh, A, B, C, D, E, Okay, what is the various combinations I could write these letters? Okay, in what order? If I was given three, how many different little subwords can I make uh, given uh, out of these five letters? If I chose three, how many possible different words can I make? So 
I'm just kind of generally highlighting uh, combinations and permutations, but this goes into um, a huge part of probability, okay? And it's, that's, of course, a subset of uh, mathematics and algebra, et cetera, okay? But anyways, factorial is very, very important in mathematics. Not that difficult, okay? Not that difficult, of course, in application in terms of uh, learning prob um, combinations and permutations, and that gets a little bit more exciting. So hopefully, you know, this motivates you to stick with mathematics because math is cool, math is awesome, and we don't want to see any sad faces uh, with math. All we want to see is happy faces, A pluses, and 100%, okay? And how do you get smarter in algebra? One skill at a time, one tiny thing at a time. Don't be of uh, the mindset that you can skip something in math. Be like, okay, teacher's teaching me this, and I don't understand this, so I'm going to forget that and just keep going. No, everything's important, and it builds upon itself. So my biggest uh, suggestion to you is, you know, if you're struggling in something, all right, get help on it, all right? Everything is important. Don't don't feel like you can just let something slide, all right? That will come back to bite you later on. And um, with that being said, you know, hopefully this video, uh, you know, found you well. You, you know, you learned something here. And if that's the case, please consider smashing that like button. That certainly helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. Been on YouTube for a long time. Uh, as you can tell, I am obsessed with teaching mathematics. And it's a wonderful platform for me to share what I know. And my objective is always to try to teach math in a clear and understandable way. Okay, so you can check out all my videos on my channel. And I'm posting new stuff all the time. So I have basic to advanced math. But if you want my best help, check out my uh, programs and uh, my notes. Just follow those links in the description of this video and you'll be good to go. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.